Hello and welcome to Eva's House of Spirit. I'm Eva and today I'm going to show you my version of Ostara incense. This video was inspired by a witchcrafting video that I saw just a little bit ago today. Um, basically a very cool witch who I know as Meg. Uh, she has her own channel here on YouTube. Her channel is under the name of Elizabeth Story, but also she is part of the collaborative channel here on YouTube that goes by the name Witchcraftin. Um, I'm going to have links to both Elizabeth Story's page and to the Witchcraftin page down below in the description. You may want to check those out. I'm also going to have a link to the specific Witchcraftin video where Elizabeth Story, um, aka Meg, um, shared her recipe for Ostara incense. But anyway, I just want to show you here in this quick tutorial my version of Ostara incense. Um, if you don't celebrate Ostara, that's fine. This incense can also be used for any sort of spring rites or celebrations or, you know, just in your practice as the season is turning toward warmer weather. Also, one final note, uh, you may notice that I have like green stains on my hands. Sadly, last night a green pen exploded in my hands. So here I am looking like a tool with green smeared all over my hands. No matter how hard I wash it off or try to wash it off, it's still there. So please forgive me there. But anyway, let's get into the tutorial. Now the first thing I have here in my mortar and pestle, I have some ground up tangerine peels. There's about, I'd say, a teaspoon in here if I could guess the measurement. It's about a teaspoon, give or take. They were dried. I dried the tangerine peels, you know, cut them into strips and I let them dry on top of my refrigerator. And then when they were nice and dry, I put them into a paper bag to keep them. Um, so anyway, yes, I ground up the tangerine peels. Why tangerine peels? Well, tangerine or orange, or you could use orange if you don't have tangerine peels. Orange or tangerine, like these sort of citrus fruits in this sort of citrus family. Even grapefruit peels could be used for this. They are sort of solar associative. And being that the weather is warming up, we're getting more sunshine, you know, it's a good herb, I think, for this sort of springtime incense. And also, citrus fruits that are sort of like orange, tangerine, or grapefruit. These are sort of also associated with prosperity and blessings and bringing in good things as well as of cleansing. So that's why I chose tangerine peels that have been dried and ground up. Again, about a teaspoon. Now to this, I'm going to add rose petals. I have here a dried rose. This originally was a pink rose but at the very base of the rose, it had like sort of a an orangey color to it. So it's like an, like an orangey, pinky type of rose. I'm just using the petals from one head of a dried rose, putting those in there. The reason why I chose this colored rose is because, again, it sort of has solar associations in the color. You know, being that it had that little bit of like orangey or yellow at the bottom. See, you can kind of see it had that sort of, you know, tint to it. Um... Rose is also good for things like love and blessings, and those are things that, you know, we may want to honor and associate with the spring, so we can add that in as well. Then, to our tangerine peels and rose petals, I'm going to add chamomile flowers. Why? Well, because chamomile, to me, is calming and it's very gentle. Probably going to add about a teaspoon of this as well. Um, I see the calmness and the gentleness of chamomile, the soothing nature of it, to sort of be associative with the calming, soothing, gentler weather that sort of starts to find its way in in the spring. 
it kind of just gives me a feeling that the hardships of winter are over. So that is here in my incense. Then to our tangerine peels, rose petals, and chamomile, I'm going to add some lavender. Lavender is an herb that I find um, promotes harmony and it's also good for things like, again, love, you know, uh, positivity, healing. These are all things that I think are very suitable to this, this incense mix that I'm making here today. So I choose to add in lavender. Again, the harmony aspect kind of gives me the sense of, um, you know, the hardships of winter being over. The healing aspect of lavender sort of gives me a sense of the healing of the energies of spring coming in and kind of like giving a breath of fresh air, newness, goodness, renewal, positivity, like into one's life, sort of healing one's life after the hardship of winter, I guess you could say, if that makes any sense. I'm going to put that in. It's kind of like a heaping teaspoon. That's what I chose for that. And then I'm going to add in a teaspoon of cinnamon. I chose cinnamon because cinnamon is like a warm herb reminiscent of the warm weather that comes in with the spring, the warmer weather anyhow. And also cinnamon brings in good things and it brings them in very fast. Cinnamon sort of gives you the sense of like prosperity, luck, love, you know, all sorts of good positive things. And so I think that's very suitable to this mix. And finally, I'd like to add in a little bit of frankincense resin. I'm just going to use one big chunk that I had in there. Put in that chunk there of frankincense. I would add more, but honestly, you know, it's not how much you put in, but the fact that it is in there. And then I'm going to add some benzoin gum, if I can just get the lid off. I'm going to add like a decent, a decent little like pinch or two of this. All right. And now I will proceed to grind up these seven ingredients. So we have tangerine peels, rose petals, chamomile, lavender, cinnamon, frankincense, and benzoin gum. I use pretty much a teaspoon or a heaping teaspoon of each of these herbs and then kind of like a, a pinch or two of the frankincense and the benzoin. So I'm going to begin grinding this all together. This may take some time. So I think I'm probably going to do a video transition and I'll come back when this is all ground up. Still grinding up my herbs and my resins and I realized in the process of grinding this that I forgot to mention why the frankincense and benzoin gum. Well, the frankincense and the benzoin gum lend a sort of sanctification aspect to this incense and being that a lot of people will be using this maybe in their Ostara rites, you know, it kind of makes sense. You know, you want some cleansing aspect, some sanctity aspect in the incense perhaps like that you're going to use in your rites. So, you know, I, I thought that the benzoin gum and the frankincense that Meg included in the recipe that she adapted I felt that those actually, um, yeah, they were quite suitable for this recipe. And that said, I'm going to continue grinding this up. So now we have a nice powdered Ostara incense. Smells quite nice. Very nice. I can definitely pick up the notes of, for example, cinnamon and citrus and lavender and so on and so forth. I will be burning this definitely in my rites and workings for spring. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. And please, again, do be sure to check out the links below. I will be sharing links to Elizabeth Story's YouTube channel. 
I will be sharing a link to the Witchcrafton channel, and I will be sharing a link to the specific Witchcrafton video that inspired me to make this Ostara incense. That said, if you have any questions, comments, thoughts, feelings, etc., please feel free to put them down in the comment box and I will do my best to address those however that I can, in the best way that I can. And if you choose to maybe VR to this with your version of Ostara Incense or Spring Incense, I welcome that as well. Or you can again just comment down below. Um, that said, blessed be and ashe. Have a great day, and I'll see you all next time. Stay awesome.